Hello friends, my name is some jackass of the YouTube channel, and welcome back to Army Gals. Now, when we left off, these three ladies were talking about a mosh pit. And I'm actually glad that I didn't continue the recording past what I recorded last, because my camera cut out like two minutes later. So, we turn. <clears throat> Go with Andrea sometime at least. She'll have someone to go with, and she can show you the ropes. And it tilts her head. I've never had anyone to go with before. Maybe. Oh. It doesn't sound very committed to me, but Andrea looks excited regardless. Fine. I'm sure Kyle could find something better to do. If you guys actually wanted to come, you could. No, you and Anna can have your little date. We'll have ours. I'd, I'd rather date Anna. Isn't that right? She links her arm with mine from Chen Hell High. <clears throat> well, I guess this is my life now. Andrea talks about it a little more as we walk. <coughs> Occasionally mentioning fans I've only heard of in passing. I think we really got her excited about this. If we get out of these woods, I hope Ida actually does go with Andrea. Both for their sakes. The walk eventually grows quiet again, the stream now much deeper as we walk along it. All the novelty of its beauty has long since worn off. <clears throat> I've been given Shelton's pack, falling to the back under its extra weight. Our path has steered us to the very edge of the street. Looking at the girls in front of me, a devious thought starts to manifest. I can feel the impulse rising much faster than my inhibition to stop it. Maybe it would light in the mood again if one of them took, just took a quick swim. I glance between each of them. So, since we want to marry Andrea, or not Andrea, we want to talk to, or we want to marry Ida. So, again, on my first playthrough, I was like, man, uh, Edda is uh, coming along great with the group, so she lightened up a lot. So, I'll push her into the screen. No, stream, no. Ida does not like that at all. The only one who will be a fan of it is Tits McKenzie. And I couldn't care less about her, so. On uh, second thought, we're not going to push anyone in. The idea actually doesn't sound like such a good one once in my mind. I actually play out how it would go. Oh look, she points to the stairs and slowly come to a stop. Or look, she screams. <clears throat> and suddenly, suddenly climb like a tree in the literal unsexy way ends up being profoundly painful. Fingers tear at my hair, tear at my hair, and feet stab my kidneys as Rain attaches herself to my back. What the hell? Snake! Oh wow, it's just a water snake. We used to find them all the time by our stream. I watch as the snake lazily moves through the water like a long, dark ribbon. Maybe it's a good thing I didn't push anyone in. I feel Rain's chest practically resting on my head. Her weight combining with a pack. Rain, please. My knees. Oh no, I'm not going anywhere. Not with that thing around. It is probably harmless. Blaze is not. Unless he's a water mosskin. Then he'll kill you. Rain, Rain goes pale. <coughs> Do you have to say that? Damn straight. It's information everyone should know. It even has sin in its freaking name! Come on, Rain, let's go. Now that I look closer, Ida looks a little perturbed, too. Yeah, she really looks disturbed. I don't know why, I don't know why everyone's so terrified. I have snakes at home. Like, pet snakes or wild snakes? Pets! Of course, it's different, Andrea. Oscar and Basil. I just hope my mom's taking care of them. She doesn't like them very much either. 
Basil. Why would something so horrifying have such a cute name? I wouldn't call it cute. It's unnatural. The fact that my strength has lasted this long is unnatural. I'll whine some more. You're the worst white knight ever. Should we get this moving again or not? She looks at me expectantly as if I suddenly elected Rain's Keeper. I have no choice but to go along with it. We're wearing boots and we're not going in the street. We'll be fine. And the path should be locked the further away from it we can get. But I can't do that with you on my back. She practically launches herself off of me. Well, let's get out of here then. <clears throat> She takes off at a pace that leaves the rest of us struggling to catch up. Andrea just shrugs me while Ida offers an approving nod before we give chase. Yeah, get it on great with Ida. We don't make it very far though with rain tiring out quickly. Let's make camp here. I'm more than happy to take a rest and no one else makes any objections. It's because something of a mighty ritual trying to talk to one of the women. Who should I try talking to tonight? Surprisingly, we talk to Andrea. I walk up to Andrea, the fire barely more than embers. A thin eyebrow arches my approach. Uh, hey. Hey. Just thought I'd come to see if you need any help. You know, getting ready for bed. She eyes me warily. Getting ready for bed. Is that your way of making a move? Okay, I thought I saw something. But what? No! I meant help with packing up the trash and everything. Not anything else. Not anything, uh, indecent. Yeah, whatever. Look, I'm not interested, alright? I'm not interested in you, Andrea. She gives me a withering look as she vanishes and vanishes into the tent. Well, that went spectacularly. I don't know what I expected, though. <sighs> really getting defeat from a simple conversation. <laughs> Day six. We start early the next morning, tired and exhausted from only one day's travel. I hear something in the distance. The girl's voice is rising and falling. Are they arguing over something? I'm gonna keep it alone. That's the option they have to choose to marry her. Uh, yeah. Every option I basically make is more or less for Ida, so. Their drama isn't my drama. I know better than to get between a cat fight. Once they decide to stop bitching, maybe we can actually get somewhere. I wander back to the camp only to stumble upon Andrea crouched over her bag. <clears throat> she nearly jumps out of her skin when she finally notices me. Oh, Kyle, you scared me, Sully. What are you doing? I only try to step ahead of her to get a better look, but Andrea only smiles. Nothing. I... I was just rearranging things, trying to free up more space in case... Kate had come across something else in the woods. More supplies, maybe? That's the least convincing lie I've ever heard. Her smile is wide, each word firing like a bullet from a gun she doesn't know how to use. She slings back... She slings the backpack across her shoulders. Have we just added where we're going yet? Not quite, but I have some ideas. These notes have some ideas, too. Yes. Let's get the others. Then we'll head out. Best to leave it alone for now. I don't want to make enemies. Where did that come from? Alright. So leave it alone. Go northeast. Go northeast. Day six, northeast. <clears throat> With a new direction in mind, we head out toward the hope of civilization again. The songbirds chirp overhead, a bit too distracted from the worry coursing through each of us. The forest grows a little thicker, more lush as we walk together. 
Occasionally, idle chatter picks up between us about school or work. It hardly feels normal. But I'm glad for the lack of excitement when things could be far worse. A casual, quiet day doesn't stomp out every complaint, though. Given our vigorous hike yesterday, it doesn't take as long for our muscles to wear it down. You try reading a visual novel and not yawn once. Two free legs used in reasonable condition. Please, someone, just take them. I don't want them anymore. You think you have it bad? I can't even walk uphill without sounding like a dying animal. How do you think I feel? <coughs> Ahead of them, Eda scoffs. You sound like my sister. Sister? Now that's a strategy I can get behind, distracting Rain from her problems with her propensity for talking. I didn't know you had a sister. Two. Oh, nice. Any brothers? Nope. Thank God. Again, I gotta, I gotta appreciate every time that she smiles. It's beautiful. Rain just shakes her head. The only child life is the only way to live. No sibling rivalry and the full limelight of attention. It's seriously the best. I don't have to put up with any sibling crap. <laughs> that explains a lot. It takes a while for Rain to realize she's being insulted. And she's not exactly that bright. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? You dumb. No. Never mind. Just as quick as you open the conversation, Edda shuts it down again. I was hoping she would talk more about herself, but that's just wishing for rain in the desert. But rain doesn't let go quite as easily. No, you meant something with that holier than thou glare. Are you implying that I'm spoiled? Yes. Are you implying you're not? Andre and I exchange glances, quickly realizing this is rapidly leaving friendly banter territory. Yeah, because I'm not. So what if I don't have siblings? That doesn't mean I get everything handed to me or whatever. Right, because that's the only way I came to that conclusion. Ah, uh, that smug. That beautiful smug. That has to be my favorite face that she makes in the entire game. I mean, I like her smile, but I love the smug. What is your problem with me? Star for attention? You said I had a problem with you. Alright, that's enough. No, I'm not done with Ice Princess over here. So much for peace. If she has a problem, then let's sort it out. You know, rounds on rain so sudden that a flinch goes to the group. She doesn't even raise her voice. Is that what you believe? I have much bigger problems than you right now. We all do. She's a giant and she's a gnat in the grand scheme of things. You don't merit being a problem. You're just an inconvenience. I expect Rain to lash out, but she's just stone faced, calculating, ran cryptic mob boss glare. I slowly realize what's happening. Ida may be the usual top dog, but Rain is the kind of woman who lives for drama. Petty arguments are probably home field advantage for her. It's like two predators going at it, a shark versus a lion, uh, trying to figure out who's going to win. And Rain has, pre has prepared her ammunition well, sizing up the shot. If this is how you treat her, her sister, I feel sorry for her. A bullet must have struck Eva, whose defense is just loud enough to look stunned. She lunges toward Rain. I said that's enough. I'm a best suit like I might start taking bets on a winner, but I can't let I can't let this play out. Both players both women glare each other down until I step between them. Oh boy. Uh say nothing. Say nothing. I stand between us, just preventing them from getting to each other. I don't know if Rain would have survived it if we decided to genuinely attack her. But I do know it would make this trip a hell of a lot worse. The force of my silence seems to slowly sink into the mood, bringing both of their tempers down. It's 
sell it. You know that we would try to get past me, but the force of that one little word is enough to knock you over. Did you not just apologize? I had to do a double take to make sure I didn't miss here. I wouldn't have actually hit it. Yeah, that definitely looked like an empty threat. Bitch, don't. Dumbass. Ranch voice is still thick with sarcasm and just a little animosity. I wouldn't have. I just. You frustrate me. She frustrates me as well. Looks like we're on the same page. Why? I didn't. You do do anything, I know. You said. She turns around, starting to walk off. Theta Gray is staring after her. Don't look at her butt. Rain. I hold up a hand to Rain, wordlessly telling her to fall back as I chase after Eva. You know, you just can't let, let it go on those terms. <coughs> With a heavy sigh, she turns her heel toward me. I almost shrink back on reflex. She shakes her head. That reasoning isn't a concern. No. But your well being is, everyone has to go along if you're gonna get through this. So tell me what the problem is. She's facing already. Ida gives me a look, but I don't shrink down beneath the gaze. Without realizing, I think I've started to understand a little how she operates. She does remind me of my <coughs> little sister. <coughs> I, don't, I still don't see how that factors in. Do you not get along with her? I do. But I take care of her too. Where we live. Whenever she's about to say she interrupts herself. I just want to pull my hair out constantly feeling like I'm about to get somewhere but never manage it. Doesn't matter. Point is, I usually take care of her and now I'm here. I can't. I watch Rain fumble around barely even able to take care of herself. And you want her to change. She nods reluctantly. I don't miss the way her fingers clench at her sides in self restraint. Never mind. We need to keep moving. We've wasted too much time on this. She showed herself more than she meant more than she meant to. At least she doesn't hate Rain. I don't like her. I wouldn't say I hate Rain either, but I really don't like Rain. Well, at least not completely, although I doubt to be swapping friendship bracelets anytime soon. I don't try to stop her from going. Even Rain looks more bewildered. But Agria. Levels of our conversation. How many times have I made you guys yawn? Gotta make sure my suit looks great. But it's too small. Even Rain looks, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I shake my head at her, effectively shutting down, and we have further attention much in the incident. While our Jackson women leave the play behind and continue walking somberly. Watching Edith's back, I want to come up with something to say to her, but I don't know what it would be. Rain being Rain eventually manages to land mood again, talking animatedly with Andrea. Edith doesn't join in, but that's not unusual. The rest of the day passes without further incidents, and the time we set up camp, everyone has calmed down. We eat less than we all obviously want. I think Rain might start licking her plate when she's done, but she holds back. Not that I would blame her, my stomach giving disconsist to rumble. Feeling that my pack is slightly lighter, though, is enough to make it hush up. Being a little uncomfortable will be the least of my stomach's problem if I indulge. Trying very hard not to think about how the stomach eats itself during starvation, I glance around the girls left about the women left it outside. I'm trying to collecting the trash and is stopping out the fire. I thought I was gonna say stopping out the trash. And is stopping out the fire and Etta heads afterwards Etta towards the tent. Rain's silhouette moves through a tent, getting ready for bed. I stand up to talk to one of them. So it's telling me Day six. I talk to Edda. Ida. Ida. Oh. Is it Edda? So there's two D's. Whatever. Edda. Hey. Okay. Back again. I don't know what you mean. 
I try to talk. Ooh, this is new for me. I try to talk to me again. I'm gonna try to want to talk to you. She finally just shrugs, but she doesn't look very intent on small talk. What do you want then? Can I already make that clear? Well, we're stuck out here together. I figure we might get to know each other. Shelton explained enough about me. I didn't seem to know that much about you. But I'm still glad I got to be around for the introductions. It made things a little less often for me. You guys had one had a one day head start on me. I guess I missed all the fun starting from the first night. Fun stuff. I didn't do that much. Just prepared camp. Prepared camp? Your tents weren't even up yet. So? I gathered the firewood. I don't know what everyone else was doing. I only slept out in the open in our sleeping bags. Shelton said we needed fresh air since we were too young to probably know what that was. She scoffs. That's my face! Love it! Unless you nod into manual labor and astronomy, I don't think you missed anything. Maybe not. I guess you wouldn't mind telling me if I asked you why we're here. Right. I guess you would. Look at that. The first between night and day. Our expression just answered that. Is that why you came here to snoop around and find out about? No. Really, I just came for a conversation. You thought about whatever you want. I'm not a particularly chatty person, I've noticed. Still love you though. Hey! She doesn't even wait for me to say anything else. She just walks off. Well. I'm actually going to end this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next part of Army Gals. Jackass out!